Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Construction Project Management Tips. Today, we're going to be looking at VUCA. VUCA stands for Volatility, Uncertainty, Complexity and Ambiguity. VUCA is something that goes on in the world around us and it was something that was developed by the military. Uh, I first heard about it through a book called uh, The Way of the Seal by Mark Devine. But I think it's been going through the military circles for many decades. And I've even heard that it was like right after the Cold War between the Russians and the U.S. that the U.S. military sort of developed it. But basically, vol volatility, uncertainty and complexity and ambiguity goes far beyond just uh, military and politics. It's with everything that we do every single day. We run into these things that we don't expect. And there can be no greater time than the time we've been going through this past cycle when we talk about COVID-19 as an example. Definitely has made us understand a lot about how the world, there's a lot of things that are very volatile and uncertain and complex and uh, not very clear to us. And so today we're just going to take a quick look at how VUCA affects the construction industry as an example. But you can tie it to any sector. Uh, that you want to think about. When we think about in construction, we think about, well, we've got a very fast changing world. We've got materials that are changing very, very quickly. We're, we're utilizing different uh, materials in construction more quickly than we ever have in the past. Uh, the methodologies that we use, the equipment that we use, we've got building information modeling, we've got all these other uh, tools and pieces of equipment, which kind of align with some of the other areas, as you'll see. Uh, but definitely these things changing very quickly. It's all part of our supply chains. And supply chains have been something that's been talked about a lot in the last couple of years when we talk about, you know, runs on toilet paper and things of that nature. But in construction, it's been a big deal because it means that lumber that we expected to be readily available is maybe not so readily available, that certain materials, maybe it's part of the building systems and it needs a microchip and that, those microchips there's a shortage of. And then that can cause massive delays in getting a chiller or some sort of heating unit and then that means our project gets delayed as a result of that so these are things that come up with volatility and we're dealing with things like price inflation it's it's difficult to price projects that are two or three years long and you're predicting what the inflation rate will be when it doubles or it triples uh, that really has an impact on profitability uh, interest rates. Well, interest rates have been historically low as a result uh, recently, but they're not always necessarily low and sometimes they can be quite volatile as well. Uh, global trade agreements, they can have big impacts on uh, supply chains, on tariffs, on costs, and that can be really difficult to deal with when we're pricing projects. So we definitely feel a lot of those. One of the things with construction is our projects aren't always just short. You know, if you're in a smaller sector, maybe the renovation sector, maybe and your projects are maybe two or three months long, that's maybe a little bit less impactful than even in larger renovations that are one or two years long. You could be running into a number of impacts from when you price the project to uh, when you're actually constructing it. And those can be tricky situations. Uh, definitely. And volatility, even when there's a boom in construction, that causes a lot of, uh, it's nice, but it may be difficult to get trades. It may be difficult to get uh, good employees, supply shortages on the resource side. And there's a lot of uncertainty uh, in the world. And I, I bring up uncertainty under this area and I bring it up under ambiguity. Um, both because it kind of crosses over and that's what you'll find with VUCA there's certain elements of it that will cross over with each other uh, but definitely uncertainty we have in projects we don't always know when we price a project that it's going to run exactly the way that we thought in fact Daniel Kahneman who wrote the book Think Fa Thinking Fast and Slow uh, talked about this when he talked about the planning fallacy, how we're overly optimistic about what we think things will be necessarily. And there are things that we des definitely don't know 100% going into it exactly how that will be. Now, certainly there's some things on projects in construction that you or your company might be very comfortable with because it's in their wheelhouse. It's in what we call the known knowns. Uh, 
uh, in those areas. But even then, you know, you can go back to volatility and you can have some interruption in the supply chain that would cause some issue. For certain COVID-19, we've had a lot of uncertainty. You know, we close things down, we open them back up. We close things down, we open them back up. And people aren't sure, you know, should I do this? Should I do that? How should I move on this particular item? And so that definitely has uh, an impact. And it's always important to remember that we can't be 100% certain about anything. And FUCA really reminds us of those aspects, uh, not to be overly confident with certain things and to definitely have done your appropriate risk assessments in identification of potential risks and where some uncertainty may play a role. Not that you'll necessarily know. That's the whole thing with unknown unknowns. You don't know what you don't know. Um, so uh, it really has that. And visit variability or variation is a major problem in construction as well. We think we have a good handle on how long something's going to take and it has a certain amount of variation that takes place for a variety of reasons. It could be extreme weather conditions, it could be a piece of equipment breaks down. Um, so there's always this certain level of uncertainty with things that we have to think about. Definitely though, getting better at variation and dealing with it and being pretty uh, agile in responding to it. The variability side in lean construction talks about variability in a positive way, meaning that that's your ability to actually respond to variation uh, when it happens and when it occurs. The team's ability to be resilient during those times is important. Uh, so the action this kind of action of removing or reducing variation, variation there's always gonna be a certain amount, but if we can reduce it and we can contain it, and we can also plan around it with certain tolerance levels of expectation, that way we have a continuous flow to the work, that's gonna definitely help us in a lot of ways deal with uncertainty and that will improve our predictability and reliability in our construction processes. Complexity. I used the uh, space shuttle example. I think it was uh, with the uh, Challenger, the, the famous Richard uh, Feynman uh, uh, discussed this when he did the review of the Challenger issues. And it had a lot to do with the levels of complexity that was involved in the Challenger crash and looking at all of the possibilities and how they accounted for them and they didn't really account for them in the right ways because there is a very high level of complexity uh, in, well, for sure, in uh, the uh, aspect of going into space. But in construction, there's varying levels as well. Some projects are very, very complex, whereas others might not be quite as complex. Uh, but it also depends on the skill level of the team, the experience level, and the engagement of all of the parties. If you have high complexity, you definitely want to be involving the right people with the right levels of experience and collaborating and engaging with them to help ensure that that level of complexity has been vetted and discussed and you've had the best inputs in your planning processes and you have a team available that has the skill set to be able to resolve issues as they occur and they will occur. That's the idea with complexity. There is a lot of complexity. So we have to be ready to uh, respond to certain issues as they come up. But ideally, we plan ahead as much as possible so that we can reduce the amount of response or reactive mode that we're in in these projects. So that, that becomes a certain uh, level of expertise and really a project management tip for success. Ambiguity, so things aren't often 100% clear. I, I use this black swan, and as I said, it kind of ties with the unknown unknowns. Black swans are definitely uh, associated with the unknown unknown. Uh, Nassim Tlaib talked about this in his book, The Black Swan. Uh, black swan events occur, and we didn't see them coming, but after they occur, we can usually explain them away. Uh, the 2008 financial crisis would be a good example of that. Uh, but some things are definitely more clear than others. Some things uh, we can see much better. So those would be um, the uh, known unknowns, things we know about, but we're just not sure if they're gonna happen on our project exactly this way. So ambiguity presents itself in certain ways. And we wanna make sure that we've done our homework so that 
we have as few opportunities for black swan events to occur. Like an unknown unknown to me would be something that I didn't know about and that has appeared, right? But to somebody else, it might be that they figured it out. There was a few people that kind of saw the 2008 financial crisis coming for what it was, uh, but there wasn't a lot. Most were more in the black swan camp. And in construction projects, these things happen all, all the time too. If you had a different project manager or a different uh, engineering team, uh, they might have seen something that the current engineering team didn't and averted a certain uh, disaster in that way. So that's again going back to why you want to have very good teams and engage well with them uh, to make sure that you've got some good clarity and that you're clearing your vision as much as possible to reduce the obscurity uh, through the lens, shall we say. So, but there will be a certain amount of ambiguity and there will always be unknown unknowns that occur. Just it's your opportunity to vet as many as possible so that when they do occur, you've got the team available, the relationships available that you can actually collaborate and get out of whatever problem that may Maybe, you know, often we're unsure which action is most correct to take in certain situations because that's the other thing we can think about uh, things from the point of view of first principles and understanding first principles. This happens with building science situations and understanding when we have second order and third order problems. Like if we do something this way, what are the potential second order problems what's the third order problem we generally see the first order response you know if we do this we get this but is there other things that could be negative as a result of that and that ties into very carefully other things that we've talked about in other videos the aspect of time cost quality and the triangles and the interactions if we do this we're going to save that but if we save that are we going to have a quality issue and end up spending more as a result of it that wouldn't be a good thing so understanding these interrelationships is helpful. So what does it really mean for uh, VUCA in, for us in construction? It means being aware things are not going to go the way that you expect them to go. And that's fine, all right? But we prepared for it as best we can. And so there's a, a good awareness of what's going on in our surroundings, not just by you, but by your whole team. Uh, change is inevitable, as Eisenhower said. Plans are nothing. Planning is everything. So. That leads to the next one, next few, which is basically we need to be able to pivot and adjust, right? This is agile thinking. This is iterative thinking. This is lean thinking uh, that we will be able to iterate and we will be able to adjust as things change and things will change. Uh, very important to remember. Collect data that is reasonably accurate that we can utilize. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be usable that we know within a certain frame that it is accurate and that we can make adjustments for. What kind of data? Well, we set a baseline schedule. These were our plans. This is our expected time rate. This is the time we expect to reach a milestone. Look at the data, collect as you're going along, see how you're doing compared to your baseline. And why do you have variances? Work out the variances. Identify what the potential constraints are that may hold you back from completing these tasks. What are some of the possible uh, risks that are involved? What are the possible uh, unknown, unknown events that could possibly crop up that could prevent this? Are they worth dealing with or are they not worth dealing with? Some things are very high risk, but there's such low likelihood of happening, it's not worth all the investment of time and cost to try to uh, mitigate them. But other cases, it's well worth that time and effort. So knowing uh, when it makes sense and understanding probabilities and understanding likelihood and understanding, is this something that's going to fail the project or is this just going to cost us a bit of our contingency? Understanding what those differences are. Utilize systems to help you make the data collection more easily. In the construction industry today, we have all sorts of software systems that we can utilize that will make our collection of data much more easy. What am I talking about? I'm talking about some of the productivity softwares that can collect data. I'm talking about some of the scheduling softwares. I'm talking about uh, some of the uh, time management softwares that can be helpful from that. Some of the cost management softwares. Uh, Develop clear goals that can be measured and monitored against what I mentioned earlier, time, 
cost, quality, safety, scope, and change control. Have good, clear goals and good, clear systems in place for those so that we can manage them, that we can create those baselines and we can compare how we're doing and we can motivate our staff and our people to get there and to be motivated and engaged, which leads to the next ones, which is create trust and build strong relationships. One of the things I like about lean construction methodology is that it's really about respect for people. Well, you're not going to create trust and build strong relationships if you don't uh, basically respect the people that you're working with. So this is in today's environment where VUCA is more involved than ever, got more volatility, more uncertainty, more complexity, more ambiguity than ever. It is really important for those reasons. And that will help us build trust and relationships. And you know what? Then we're going to be able to collaborate and engage with all of this knowledge that's available in our project teams. And I'm talking about the trade partners, I'm talking about the consultants, I'm talking about the owners, the GC's team, everybody being involved and collaborating, engaging, not for the individual, but optimizing for the project. And you can't figure this out by yourself. This is gonna help you as a team be able to figure it out as you go along. Plan it out well and then be able to iterate, iterate, iterate. And I think if you take these elements of VUCA and you keep that in mind when you're building your systems, when you're interacting with your trade partners, your suppliers, your vendors, consultants, owners, as I mentioned, it's gonna lead to much, much more success in your future. So if you enjoyed this video, please uh, click the subscribe button, click the like button, Click it right now and we'll see you in future videos. Feel free to leave a comment or an example that you've had with VUCA. Uh, those always make for good discussions as we build our community. I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.